Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave is here, and I am cheap. Sure. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and this is Vertical Drop Heroes HD, the Steam Edition. This game comes to us from Nerduck Productions, and it is currently available on Steam for a reported price of $6.99. Vertical Drop Heroes was released earlier this year on GOG.com and The Humble Store, and I think, if I may wildly speculate, that that was done in order to build a groundswell beneath the game, to get a user community, and to get some reviews out there so that they could push through Greenlight. And indeed, it worked. They have been greenlit, and now they are dropping this definitive Steam edition. So you will see this game available on GOG and Humble, as I said. Those are not necessarily the Steam edition. Do your research and find out for yourself what the differences are and which edition you feel more comfortable paying for. I am specifically here looking at the Steam edition of Vertical Drop Heroes. All right, let's get into the action here. But before we can get into the action, of course, we've got to recap the prophecy. Now, we all live in the world. We know about the prophecy, right? I mean, who doesn't? But just in case someone out there doesn't know about the prophecy, I'll tell you. As you already know, an ancient legend speaks of a great hero. He's going to enter that portal, the one at the Temple of Knowledge, not the one on Eugene, the temple on uh, Seventh. He's going to fight across many strange and fantastic lands. He's going to be looking for the Holy Sanctuary, right? The one that holds the great secret to existence. Uh, unfortunately, as most heroes do find out, uh, the problem with ancient prophecies is that everyone thinks the prophecies about them. Am I right? Uh, especially in a land like this, a land that we live in of epic adventure and bloodthirsty monsters. Everybody's a hero, right? So this story that we're about to embark on this is a story of the tragic and largely unnecessary deaths of many heroes who thought that they were the great hero of the prophecy, but sadly, and fatally, these guys were mistaken. However, it's also the story about the one hero who did make it. Now, silliness aside, I actually like that because it's a really good way to back up the basic mechanic of the game, which is, you're going to choose heroes, those heroes are going to die you are gonna hopefully achieve things during your run with those heroes that will make your next hero even better until eventually you become the hero that fulfills the prophecy. Let's jump into the game and let's get things moving. Each and every game of Vertical Drop Heroes begins with your hero selection. These three guys have been generated from a pool of traits, abilities, and weapons that I have unlocked while playing the game. Now, that does mean that your first couple of times in the game, you're going to get some very samey heroes that are not going to be all that interesting, but persevere, play, unlock, and you will start to see the variances that are possible with the generation of heroes. Look at this. I mean, Rustwild here has 113 health, while Owlsythe only has 46. Now, if you look a little closer, you can figure out why that is. You can see that uh, Rustwild has tough as a passive trait, which gives him 33% more health, whereas Owlsythe not only lacks the tough passive trait, but is losing 50% of his HP thanks to his weapon. So a lot going on here. There's so much that's happening on this screen that I really don't want to try to cover it all. Suffice it to say, you'll kind of get the hang of it as we go through the game. Uh, let's see. Actually, uh, yeah, I kind of like Rustwild. So let's venture forth with Rustwild. This is the Temple of Knowledge. This is your hub. This is where you can do things like talk to this gentleman here who will upgrade your base damage and this gentleman over here who will upgrade your base health. If you're curious what your abilities do, you can talk to a Naruto guy here or N Naruto guy here, and they'll basically tell you what your active abilities do. Your active abilities, you can see over on the right hand side, represented with the blue orbs. One has a six, one has a two, shield and recovery. Those are active abilities that you activate while playing and have limited use. This panda bear down here, that's a little bit too complicated. We'll talk about that as we play. And uh, this nice gentleman down here, Naruto guy? No, that's, uh, what is it, Airbender guy? I don't, I don't know anime. You, you should know that by now. Uh, he's going to tell you how much you've uh, actually been playing. And uh, you can see two hours and 21 minutes into the game. That's actual time in the levels, I do believe. My Steam uh, counter would reflect quite a bit more time here. So, uh, yeah, that's enough talking. Let's actually play this damn game, finally. Here we go. 
and we are in to Vertical Drop Heroes. So there's a few things to notice. First of all, you're gonna see that coins are being attracted to me. Why is that? Well, it's because I have the greedy trait. So money is gonna be drawn to me. So the basic idea here is to descend. There is a boss and a portal out of the level at the bottom of every single level. Along the way, you can do things like activate shrines. This one will restore all of my abilities to full. All my abilities are at full, so I don't really need that restoration, but it actually allows you to augment your gameplay as you go through. Some of them are good, some of them have a bit of risk involved. For instance, this one wants to spawn two enemies in exchange for a key. Now, I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to skip it. It doesn't cost me anything to use it or to skip it, but I'm going to go ahead and bypass it. Here you can see a little heart inside of a blue pulsating orb. That is actually a peace orb. If you go through a level without killing any enemies, you can collect peace orbs. But the moment that you kill an enemy, the peace orbs disappear. When you grab a peace orb, you're going to get XP and you're going to get money. As you can see, I set off this alarm, which caused me to immediately kill a guy and ruin my pacifist run. But uh, the peace orbs are basically a way to uh, increase your XP and money gain without uh, killing enemies. You actually can get more uh, XP and more money on pacifist runs than you do on runs through where you're actually killing uh, all of the enemies because that little panda back at home base, back at the temple, will increase the value of each individual peace orb. It's an interesting, more advanced tactic that we probably don't need to delve into any more than we already have. So there's an automatic attack when you get close enough to an enemy to actually uh, initiate an attack. And uh, you can, however, also swing your weapon wildly as much as you would like. So we're gonna descend here and just try to get to the bottom and get out of here. You can see there are some little secondary objectives. For instance, there's a princess, <clears throat> excuse me, up in the left-hand corner who wants me to collect roses for her. I'll pick those up if possible. I'm not gonna go out of my way to pick those up, but she surely has some wonderful reward waiting for me. So Shrine of Sparks, just demonstrate one of these so you can see what it does. For five gold, I can send two lightning strikes out in random directions. That sounds pretty great. Let's do that. There you go. So we managed to kill one enemy for five gold. Is it worth it? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily think that was worth it, but in certain circumstances, it will be very, very worth it. Uh, so I'll show you some of these active abilities. My shield ability will, as you might imagine, shield me, and my recover ability will allow me to regain health. You're gonna notice we have a, uh, a nice boss down there. That is the boss of the level. We need to kill him in order to access the portal, which will get us out of here and further into the temple. So let's go down here and let's kill him. Uh, this hero is very tanky that I've got built right now because he has shield and because he has recovery and he has a whole lot of health. So I'm not going to shy away from just a direct attack on this boss. I also do a decent enough amount of damage that I'm going to take very little damage in uh, on my way to killing off that boss. And that's the loop. You have seen it. That's the loop of vertical drop heroes. Now do that in increasingly difficult scenarios that will reach ludicrous proportions and you will eventually beat the game. So again, we're going to start out on this level with our pacifist run intact. You can see at the middle of the screen in the bottom there, pacifist with some lovely hearts. While we're doing that, we're going to collect those peace orbs. As you can see, the peace orbs are registering six XP and four, well, not four gold. I'm collecting all kinds of mad gold. Uh, yeah, five XP and five gold. So it, it ramps up as you collect them, I see. Uh, I don't know that I've actually ever noticed that before. Uh, but yeah, so that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go through the level if you wanna try that advanced tactic and you're, gonna, you're not gonna kill anything. Unfortunately, I killed something and killed my pacifist run. So that's a different way to play the game, a completely different and fully viable way to play through each individual level. And I've actually had one level that rewarded me significantly for making it all the way to the bottom and exiting without killing anything, including the boss. So that was really, really cool. So here we've got a, uh, another uh, risk reward value proposition here. Spawn two enemies, gain a key. Sure, I don't fear these enemies. Uh, in two or three levels, I'll start to fear enemies. But as you can see, I'm one-shotting everything here. So I'm not really scared of uh, taking the chance on fighting two more enemies. Oh, the infamous Raven. There you go. Oh, here's our uh, sparks again. Maybe we can do a little better for this 12 gold. Eh, killed a couple enemies. Okay. In the end, we only netted one uh, one extra gold, but, you know, whatever. 
So these little guys here, these little uh, two things, these little uh, banners with the skulls on top are alarms so that when I trigger that, enemies will spawn. Perhaps you've noticed that happening already. And this guy here with the yellow outline, he is a quest giver or just a guy hanging out in the level who wants something. So as you can see, he's, uh, he's boasting about having taken out a quill beast and he wants me to defeat three more. If I can do that and make it back up here, I can actually get two additional maximum damage. So uh, we can look for quill beasts as we journey through the rest of the level and perhaps get a nice bonus. Crates do contain gold, chests contain other additional benefits like gold and potions, and you do have these shrines, of course, everywhere. Gems, which are going to give me money for a couple of enemy spawns. Sure, I'll do it. Hey, there's a quill beast down there. You can see him moving very slowly, shooting quills out of his back. So uh, yeah, well, we'll definitely want to plan to kill him. So let's go ahead and do that. Setting off alarms left and right, bringing enemies in. But I'm in the early going here. I have a fairly powerfully built hero who doesn't necessarily fear the enemies on level two. So I'm triggering alarms left and right to spawn more enemies, to get more gold and get more XP. And that is because, again, I can regenerate health, I can shield myself, I can do all sorts of different things that will actually help me to uh, survive. And since I am so tanky, I'm taking advantage of it by just sort of owning face here and not really caring about the status of my health. I'm getting maybe a little bit low on health, so it could be time... Well, forget about that, I just leveled up. I was going to say it could be time to think about activating our recover ability, but indeed it is not. Shrine of Blood, 18 coins. So we can trade, uh, yeah, coins for damage. Uh, sure, why not? This is a pretty good run we're on here, so let's do it. Here's our boss, our next boss in order. Uh, yeah, lots of different bosses, lots of different variety. Uh, you can see here we're fighting the Red Champion is the name of this boss. Um, they do have all sorts of varying different tactics. It's a really interesting game in terms of boss mechanics. Uh, there's a boss that's uh, sort of a big worm who constantly uh, sp uh, splits into smaller versions of himself, and I really like that one a lot. Uh, now, one thing I'm noticing with this build is the pain of not necessarily having a uh, an active ability that does damage. All my active abilities are about restoring health and uh, making me generally survivable. So I'm kind of lamenting not having something like a boomerang or a crossbow or something that I can shoot at a distance, but still doing great. So who really cares? Now, this is going to be the level where we're first going to start to see a little bit of problem. Now, if you look down at the bottom of the screen before I move on, you can see we had uh, 10 levels down there at the bottom showing us uh, that we have 10 levels to go or 10 levels total in the game. So that would be seven to go from here. Each level is introducing new mechanics, introducing new tile types. You can see here this light sand disappears from underneath your feet, uh, making things a little bit complicated. You got new enemy types, so much variety in this game. It's really, really impressive. Uh, we are still currently a pacifist, so let's take full advantage of that. There's a tripped out wizard who wants us to do something. He wants green potions. Eh, maybe we can do that. Now, we did hit an alarm here, which was cleverly hidden. So we've lost our pacifist run. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, but yeah, this is Vertical Drop Heroes. This is the loop of Vertical Drop Heroes. This did originally exist as a Flash game, but that game has been made largely obsolete by how great and updated and polished this particular title is. Uh, you can go back and check that game out if you just want a very, very rough idea of what Vertical Drop Heroes HD actually contains, but I really wouldn't recommend it at this point. So we can drop down into this uh, sort of special prize room here if we want to. We've got plenty of keys. So we got uh, we got a coin. We've got all kinds of stuff popping up here. XP. Got a lot of XP. Here's a guy we can free. So we're going to free him. He's going to fight alongside us now. This ranger going to try to take out some enemies on our behalf. And we are just going to continue adventuring and continuing trying to uh, continue to try to get to that secret of all existence and hopefully become enlightened heroes, enlightened dealers of death, I guess you might say. So yeah, I don't really feel compelled to go a whole lot further uh, with this game. I'm going to rush down here to the bottom and uh, just try to get through this level before we end things up. We can see a different boss here. That's kind of what I was hoping to see. Uh, something a little bit different for you guys. I'm going to use my shield to tank him a bit, and uh, we are going to finish this off without too much worry here. There you go. Get into the next level. And uh, here, this is something I was actually hoping to see. So we have a new trait which is available. Our passive traits like tough and greedy can be purchased from these guys with their weird spider boars. 
And uh, in this case, you're gonna start with five keys. Keys also give HP and coins. Wow, okay. So by purchasing this, future heroes can pull it from the random pool of traits. And we are indeed gonna purchase this because that looks like a really, really good trait. Now, I do wanna rush to the bottom of this level because there's one thing I want you guys to hear. I think in general, the sound in this game is good. I think that the uh, music is very nice in most of the early levels, but the fifth level in particular has my favorite track in the game. I like this sort of electronic uh, groove that the, the, the soundtrack has going, but the fifth, the fifth level really opens things up. I don't like you at all. Uh, the fifth level really opens things up, so I wanna jump over, get to the fifth level, and uh, share that with you guys. Now, one thing I will say here, uh, a little bit of a tight jump here. This is just high enough for me to make it. There have been times when I've had levels generated for me which contain areas where you will be permanently stuck. Because it's randomly generated, it does indeed suffer from the possibility of that. I imagine that there are complex rules in place in the engine to prevent that from happening, but on two different occasions, I have become stuck to such a point that I cannot get out and I had to quit the run. Now, you don't really lose much. Uh, you uh, maintain your gold, but you do lose what is otherwise a really good run. And uh, that's not a whole lot of fun. So uh, let's go ahead and use our recover ability to gain back all that health. Then we're gonna free this ranger, who's gonna help us in our effort to defeat the boss at the bottom of the level. There we go, good thing the regeneration was still active when I fell on those spikes, so that helped out quite a bit. So our ranger really not gonna have a whole lot to say here. He's not gonna be able to do a whole lot for us. Oh my God, seriously, we've got those little fire squirrels down there with the skulls? No, 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 no. Uh, okay, so for the cost of five keys, I could actually unlock this door. Uh, but I don't have five keys. I have access to a fourth key, uh, but I don't have five keys. Uh, so we've activated our recovery, we've activated our shield, and we're gonna try to clear out here. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna fail. Yeah, we're gonna fail. Uh, well, let's go ahead and grab our shield again and just clear out all these ads, grab a health potion, and uh, try our darndest to beat this boss. I think we've got it. I think we're going to be okay, and indeed we are. So now let me share with you my favorite music in this game. I think it's a really nice track here in the fifth level. I will be quiet so you can take it in. So there you have it, folks. Uh, I really do like that track. Kind of Frank Kopacki-esque uh, there with the uh, techno uh, electronic sounds mixed with a little bit of rock and guitar. I just really think it's a, a nice change of pace from what you've been getting in the previous uh, levels. And I think it comes in at just a perfect spot. And uh, I really do like it here on this uh, cave level. So uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it for Vertical Drop Heroes. If you uh, are not certain about my feelings on this game, I really enjoy it. I really like it a whole lot. I think it's a home run in terms of its uh, HD remakeness of the Flash game. It absolutely improves uh, a great deal on the uh, Flash game, and it is really, really worth your time and your money. I've had so much fun with this game and continue to be uh, fairly addicted to the interesting gameplay that Vertical Drop Heroes offers in this HD package. So uh, yeah, check Steam, check Humble, check GOG, all sorts of different ways to own this game. Again, uh, you want to research that. You want to make sure that you're buying the version that you want and uh, not indeed ending up with something that you will not be happy with. Hey, he's got regeneration. I don't like that at all. 
I think I'm gonna have to kill him for that. There we go. All right, guys, Vertical Drop Heroes HD. Really enjoy the game. Hope that you will give it a chance. Take a look at it on Steam. Links are in the description below. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy. Thank you.